So when we use the string methods, we were using them on an object that is always built in to Python. But there are many other kinds of objects besides strings and numbers and booleans. Um, and not all of them are always available. So an example of this are objects from the date time module. They're, it's included in the standard library, but they're not available until you actually import them. So uh, we're going to look at two of these kinds of objects, a date object and a date time object. So before we can work with these two kinds of objects, we have to import the date time module. So let's go ahead and do that. The way that you instantiate a date object, there's actually two ways of doing it. One way is to use this format here, where we uh, create the date object by uh, in inputting as arguments the year, the month, and the day that we want to have for that date object. So the format date time dot date means that we're talking about the date object from the date time module. Um, and then there's actually a method that we can do to date objects, and it's a method called today. And what that method does is it sets today's date as the value of that date object when it's created. So I'm actually going to create two date objects one date called September 11, which was, uh, which represents the date September 11, 2001, and another date called this day, which is whatever today's date is. So let's go ahead and run this. And we can see I asked the Python to tell me what kind of an object September 11 is, and it says it is a date object from the date time module. So there are a number of methods that we can do on dates. And one of them is to print the date in ISO 8601 format. So the date itself, September 11, it's not like a string. It doesn't have any uh, fixed representation. We could represent it in a number of different ways. So in the ISO 8601 format is just one of them. We can also do a method which produces the day of the week um, as a number with Monday is zero, Tuesday is one, Wednesday is two, and so forth. Or there's another method called strf time, which is uh, string formatted time. And so there are a series of codes that you can use, and you have to look at the date time documentation to see what those codes are. But the code percent %A is the uh, format code for uh, a fully written out day of the week. So each of these methods produces a different aspect of the date. Uh, the date in one format, the day in the week is the day of the week as a number and the day of the week as a string. And you will see I'm going to apply these methods to both of the date objects that I created, September 11 and also today. And uh, also notice that I put a print function with no argument so that it would print a blank line between these two blocks of test text. So if we run that, Here's the ISO 8601 formatted date. Uh, September 11th was on a Tuesday. So here it is as a number and here it is as a word. And then here is today's date as well. One thing to be a little cautious about is that um, these date time or, or these dates are the local dates. And what exactly local date means is going to be unclear if you are running these on a cloud server. So um, if you're running it on your local computer at home using a local installation of Jupyter Notebooks, it should actually tell you the date. But if, the, um, if you're running it on Azure or on Colab, we don't really have any idea where those servers are. And 
so we don't have any idea what this will produce for the local time. A lot of times those servers are actually running on universal coordinated time or UTC. This is uh, the sort of more up-to-date uh, term for Greenwich Mean Time or GMT. So we can see what the, the uh, date and time is um, in UTC by using a different um, object. So instead of creating a date object from the date time module, we're going to create a date time object. So this is not only just the date, but it will also include the time as well. And we can populate that date time object with the current universal coordinated time by using this method UTC now on the date time object that we are creating. And then we'll take that value and we'll call it right now. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, and it says, if, if I ask what is right now, it tells me it is a date time object from the date time module. So um, we, just as we could show the date in the ISO A601 format, we can also show the date time. So there is a method called dot ISO format that will do that. And then in a similar way, as we saw, we can create formatted strings um, that will show the date time in that way. So let's just go ahead and run this and then we can come back and look at this code and see what it means, the string format code. So if I run this, so here is the current date time in the ISO 8601 format. And then here I've written it as May 11, 2020 at 3.55 a.m. You may be wondering, what is he doing up at 3.55 a.m.? It's actually not 3.55 a.m., it's only 11 p.m. But remember, this is UTC time and I'm not in London. So it's actually May 10th, not May 11th. But because UTC has already gone on to the next day, I get the date of May 11th. Now, the, the, so the codes here, uh, percent %B is the month, and then percent %D is the day. So if I wanted to do this in like the European time where you put the day first and then the month, I could do that and get rid of this comma because I don't need it if I do that. Now if I run this again, I get it with the day first and then the month. So using the string format basically allows me to display the date any way that I want. Now, if you were paying close attention, you'll notice that the time here did not change any. If I run this over and over again, I do not get new times. And the reason is because when I instantiated this right now date time object, it basically froze that at whatever the date and time was when I ran this uh, statement, which actually created the object. Once the object was created, yeah, I can tell it to show it to me in different formats, but the date time object doesn't change any. It remains, it has the value that it had when I created it. Now, if I go through and run this again, then it's gonna create a new, a new date time object and assign it to the variable right now. And we'll see, it should say something different than 3.55 a.m. So let's go ahead and run that and run that. Now it says 3.58 a.m. because three minutes have gone by since the last time I ran this. 